the great whore. Revelation 17 verse 1, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. One of the seven angels, one of the seven angels that were originally sent as messengers to the seven churches of Asia. Come hither. These words are not the same as when it says, Come up hither in Revelation 4 verse 1 and 11 12. They are also totally different Greek words. They just mean come here. Revelation 21 verse 9. The judgment of the great whore. There is a judgment day coming for this great whore. Just what exactly is this great whore that the Bible speaks about? And what are the characteristics that make up this whore? First, we know gender-wise, a whore is a woman. Leviticus 19 verse 29, Do not prostitute thy daughter, to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Hebrews 13 verse 4, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. This great whore has feminine characteristics attributed to her but she is not an actual woman. She is an institution. We also know that a whore is someone who is loose with her body. She does whatever brings pleasure or capital gain to herself without regard to the consequences. A virgin, however, will save herself for her future husband so that she may present herself to him as a chaste virgin. A whore on the other hand does with her body that which was not intended for it by her creator. This whorish woman lures the masses to commit spiritual adultery by taking people away from the true worship of God to a counterfeit one. That sitteth upon many waters, Jeremiah 51 verse 13 and surrounding verses. Revelation 17 verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication. This fornication is not a physical union between a man and woman, but a spiritual union between herself and others. The kings of the earth represent the governments which offer financial benefits to this whore in exchange for her agreement not to get involved in political issues. It is bribe money to keep her silent as well as money to purchase her support. Come election time, this woman, which is represented here as a whore, is a spiritual body. This is not Christ's church, it is Satan's church. Mystery Babylon is more than an apostate church, it is the Babylonian mystery religion which worships Baal. Once the true church is raptured, any light that remained in those churches will be wholly given over to Baal worship. There are those today who worship Christ and unknowingly have elements of Baal worship in their practices. When Satan deceives the world, he tells them that he is the one they have been praying to and serving. Everything that God has, Satan attempts to counterfeit. Satan also has his own Bibles and his own saviors. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 14 to 15 And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. This false church, represented by a whore, gives the kings of the earth whatever pleases them in exchange for financial enumeration. The Bible also says in verse 1 that this church sits on many waters. Many churches believe in the unity of church and state, and they are definitely committing spiritual fornication as far as the word of God is concerned. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Revelation 14 verses 8 to 10, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation 16 verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Revelation 18 verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Revelation 17 verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. He carried me away in the spirit. Ezekiel 37 verse 1, Revelations 1 10 and 21 10. Into the wilderness, the wilderness is always a desert place in the Bible, uninhabited like modern-day Babylon. This actual city was recently rebuilt, 
but it is uninhabited currently. It could begin to be inhabited at any time given the situation. It could also mean that it is surrounded by the desert as well. A woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, a religious whore in collusion with a political power, a union of ten nations that all want to kill Jewish believers in the end times. Full of the names of blasphemy, any number of false religions that deny that Jesus is the Christ will be guilty of this sin. Have seven heads and ten horns, seven world leaders and ten current kings that all pledge their allegiance to the seventh world leader. John saw this woman, the false worldwide religious system, sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast, the political system that will be ruled by the Antichrist, and it is full of the names of blasphemy. The secular world leaders have no place for religion and will use this whore as long as it serves their purpose. When the time is right to attempt to establish a secular world order, one without a church to dictate what it can and cannot do, they will gladly let it be destroyed. Also, in verse 3, it says that this beast has seven heads and ten horns. It will be made up of a conglomeration of ten countries, possibly from the nations surrounding Israel. Revelation 17 verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Purple and scarlet color. The official colors of this whore are purple and scarlet. What is her sin that is mentioned here? She is in bed with the state. When a church gets in bed with the state, it is not far down the road before it compromises its doctrinal stand. The colors themselves are first found in the tabernacle in the wilderness along with two other colors, so their colors have religious meanings behind them. The fact that half of the colors are missing tells you that it is religious in nature, but the two entities are not the same. Decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, this woman is filthy rich because of her followers. A golden cup in her hand is identified by the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51 verse 7 Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore, the nations are mad. Revelation 17 verse 5 And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Upon her forehead was a name written, Revelation 14 verse 1. Mystery, Babylon the Great, what is the mystery? Simple, this Babylon is not the same Babylon that once ruled the world. It is another Babylon, a mystery Babylon. It is similar in some respects with the original Babylon, but it is not located in ancient Iraq. Its location is mentioned later on. The mother of harlots, she has given birth to numerous daughters who themselves pervert the truth of God and cause those who follow them to commit spiritual adultery by worshipping as they want you to worship, which is adultery in God's eyes. Abominations of the earth, the Canaanites committed many abominations, which were sexual in nature, and they were dispossessed of the land for defiling it. Leviticus 18 verses 26 to 29 Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled winky face, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spurred out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. This whore in the end times will be in favor of many perversions in spiritual and carnal ways, and will encourage others under her influence to do them as well with the wine of her fornications. Verse 2 also says, The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Wine is used to get you to do something you would not normally do. This great whore has to use something that appeals to their flesh to entice the inhabitants of the earth to commit fornication with her. God has given a woman everything she needs to attract a man, but a harlot has lost those things which attract a spiritual man, i.e., her modesty, meekness, and her virginity. When a woman does not have these qualities anymore, she has to resort to other methods to seduce her victims. The wine referred to here is money. The true church does not need the government to prop it up because it is standing on a solid foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 17 verse 6 And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The woman drunken with the blood of the saints, this is the blood of Jewish and Gentile believers in Jesus for the last 2,000 years represented by the saints who were persecuted by the Antichrist, the political powers supporting the religious whore. The blood of the martyrs of Jesus, this is the blood of the believers who stand up to the wicked state church ran by the false prophet. Revelation 17 verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her. 
which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The mystery of the woman, the whore mentioned above, is the religious system led by the false prophet at that time. The beast that carrieth her, the beast has seven heads. The political ruler and his government and armies that are at the disposal of the woman, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The heads are described as the seven mountains on which she sits, while the ten horns are ten kings that give their power to the beast. Revelation 17 verse 8 The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. The beast that thou sawest was, the beast is alive on the earth for three and one half years. The first half of the tribulation period, he is called the man of sin at this time, and is not. At the moment this angel is speaking to John, he says in the present tense that the beast is not. That means at that moment the beast was dead, which occurs when he is struck with a sword according to the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah 11 verse 17 Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock! The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened, and shall ascend. The beast ascends out of the bottomless pit at the moment the dragon is cast down from heaven and opens the pit to release his army of locusts. More importantly, to resurrect the man of sin and make him the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 The bottomless pit, an abyss. It is the place where locusts come from to torment all those on the earth that are not sealed with the seal of God. Revelation 9 verses 1 to 11 They have a king over them, who is the angel of the pit. It is the place where Satan will be bound for a thousand years until the end of the kingdom when he shall be loosed for a season to deceive the nations for the last time for a season. Revelation 11 colon 7, 20 colon 1 dash 3 Go into perdition, both Judas and Satan are called the son of perdition in scripture. It is possible that Satan could use a dead man in similar fashion as God uses Elijah and Moses during those same days, because there is a biblical precedence for it. John 17 verse 12 The book of life from the foundation of the world, there are people in verse 8 who are mentioned who at no time in their life had ever placed their trust in Jesus as their Messiah, and their name then was never written in the book of life. The beast that was, and is not, and yet is, note the similarity with Jesus in Revelation 1 verse 8. Revelation 17 verses 9 to 10, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The seven heads, they are seven world governments, and their leaders. Five are fallen, one fell later, and the seventh is yet to come. Many believe this seventh to be either the European community, and its end-time leader, or a revived Grecian kingdom once ruled by Alexander the Great, but now made up of mostly of the Muslims' nations around Israel. That kingdom was divided into four kingdoms, because Alexander left no heir to the empire. This whore will definitely play a major role in the persecution of the true believers during the tribulation period. Many end-time churches will drop their differences and unite because of the signs and wonders that they see performed by the beast and the false prophet. One is, this one that is, was there at the time of John's writing the book of the Revelation. It was the Roman Empire. The other is yet to come, the end-time government of the Antichrist. A short space, this will only last seven years. Seven mountains, Mountains are referred to prophetically as kingdoms in numerous places in the scriptures. Daniel 2 verses 31 to 45. Revelation 17 verses 11 to 12. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. He is the eighth, he was the seventh, but he was killed by a sword at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Immediately after the dragon was cast out of heaven with the key of the bottomless pit, he resurrects him and he becomes the eighth world ruler as well, but now totally possessed by Satan himself. The Ten Horns, Ten Kings See in Esther the story of Haman's ten sons, types of the Antichrist who wants to destroy Jews that are believers, and he has ten sons who eventually are destroyed, as the ten rulers with the Antichrist will be. Revelation 17 verse 13 These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These have one mind, the ten kings of verse 12. Revelation 17 verse 14 These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords, and King of kings, 
and they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. The Lamb, is the Lamb from earlier. The leader of this confederation comes from the seventh kingdom, and since he is called the Assyrian, that would mean he comes out of the Grecian Empire once ruled by Alexander. The ten horns represent the final form of this large union of nations, which pledge their allegiance to the beast system, and its leader. They shall surrender their sovereignty over to the beast, to make it the world's most powerful organization. Note that this conglomeration does not control the whole world. Numerous nations rise up against it, the Russians, armies of the East, according to prophecy, they are just the major players in the world at that time. The Lord of Lords, and King of Kings, he is the one who is the rightful heir to rule both the heavens and the earth. Kings are similar, but different than lords. Jesus is both, overall, in every way. The word Lord means a master, and King means a sovereign. They that are with him, these are those Jews in the tribulation period that believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God and who endure unto the end. Called, those who are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19 verse 9. Chosen, this is the word electos in the Greek. They are not elected to salvation, but chosen to rule and reign with him in the kingdom, because they endured unto the end. Faithful, faithful unto death. Revelation 2 verse 10. Revelation 17 verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. The waters, they represent the world. The beast is none other than Satan incarnate, a third part of a satanic trinity. According to verse 8, because it says that this beast shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and we know because of the verses in Revelation 19 verse 20. Revelation 19 verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Mystery, Babylon the Great, which we determine to be the religious system of the Antichrist will also not be the only type of worship going on during the tribulation period. There will be every denomination that you see today, still operating only under stricter control. This will not be a problem with all the believers out of the way after the rapture, because Satan and his associates do not care about the name that is on the door. They only care that false doctrine is being preached indoors. Some truth is okay with Satan to make it plausible, but there must be just enough error to mislead those who are too busy making money or enjoying life to send them to hell. In verse 16, God allows the beast with its ten kings and kingdoms to turn against the whore, to destroy it. Revelation 17 verse 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. The ten horns, they hate the whore, and eventually attack the whore, and make her desolate. The beast, the Antichrist. Revelation 11 verse 7. Revelation 17 verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Their hearts, the ten horns who agree to give their kingdom to the Antichrist. Verse 18 further identifies the whore. It is definitely referring to the city that rules kings in a religious sense, and that would be Babylon, where Satan will undoubtedly rule from. Revelation 17 verse 18 And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The woman, that great city, as we saw earlier, was a reference to Babylon. There are today different cities that could be candidates to be Mystery Babylon, because they have many characteristics of Baal worship. That great city, many cities can be said to be ones that have reigned over the kings of the earth, either religiously or politically. This city is mentioned in the present tense as one that is reigning at the time at which the events of this book are unfolding. But the words seem to also imply that this city has been reigning over the kings of the earth for a very long time. Chapter 18 Babylon the Great is Fallen Revelation 18 verse 1 And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. I saw another angel come down from heaven. This angel is the Lord Jesus Christ, coming as the messenger of God, announcing the destruction of God's enemy. Jesus is not an angelic being but he often appears as the angel of the Lord throughout scripture. The word angel means messenger. The earth was lightened with his glory. No angel could light anything with their own glory. Numbers 14 21, But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Psalm 72 verse 19, And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Revelation 18 verse 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, 
and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. If Babylon fell, then it fell from a place where it originally belonged, until the devils and the foul spirits started to inhabit her. And cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Birds are often used to symbolize devils in the Bible, like in the parable of the sower. Matthew 13 verses 3 to 4, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Matthew 13 verse 19, When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Revelation 18 verses 3 to 5, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Come out of her, my people. This brings us to a better understanding of who Babylon the Great is by the voice from heaven commanding God's people to come out of her. I believe this is much more than just a nation but a religious system, which has corrupted God's word, and killed its ministers. Imagine a church without Jesus, because Satan will tell the world Jesus was not their deliverer, but that he is. If you throw out Jesus and what little they have right and put the Antichrist in his place, you have pure ball worship. When the rapture happens, and Satan causes all to follow after him instead of Jesus, they will return to their original form of pure ball worship. Revelation 18 verse 6, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. According to her works, these works are the damning of billions of souls to hell and killing those that have stood up to her over the centuries. This is the works of this mystery Babylon. She is a chameleon that changes in whatever culture she finds herself in, to intoxicate that culture into some form of Babylonian mystery religion. In the cup which she hath filled, God instructs his angels to attack this whorish system, in retaliation for the treatment she has dished out over her history. Revelation 18 verse 7, How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Jeremiah 7 verse 18 and 44 colon 17 dash 25. Also compare this with the words of the prophet Zephaniah. Jeremiah 7 verse 18, The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough, to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Jeremiah 44 verses 17 to 25, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we, and our fathers, our kings, and our princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her, without our men? Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men, and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye, and your fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and came it not into his mind, so that the Lord could no longer bear, because of the evil of your doings, and because of the abominations which ye have committed, therefore, is your land a desolation, and an astonishment, and a curse, without an inhabitant, as at this day. Because ye have burned incense, and because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore, this evil is happened unto you, as at this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people, and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths, and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed, to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows, and surely perform your vows. Zephaniah 2 verse 15 This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me, 
How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Every one that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. Revelation 18 verses 8 to 10 Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. 4. Strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. In one day, Gulf War I was only four days, but it was nothing close to this event when God judges his enemy. In one hour, only God can cause such an abrupt end as this. Revelation 18 verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. This is possibly rebuilt Babylon. We can be confused easily by not remembering that there is a religious Babylon as well as a commercial Babylon. To force one to be both will lead to confusion. Revelation 18 verses 12 to 14, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Imagine the nations of the world uniting under one political and religious leader, and what power he would hold. We are moving very quickly in that direction today. Revelation 18 verses 15 to 18, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that was clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones, and pearls, for in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? This sounds like an attack which dwarfs the events of 9-11 dramatically. This is God's judgment on his enemies, not one enemy against another. Revelation 18 verses 19 to 20, And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she, made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. They will rejoice on that day, because the devil's system, that has destroyed multiple billions of souls in hell, will itself be destroyed. That is what is being rejoiced over. On this day, the deceiver that is the cause of most of the world's suffering will be being put out of business, and that will be something to rejoice about. Revelation 18 verses 21 to 22, And a mighty angel, took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers, and musicians, and of pipers, and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman, of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. A mighty angel, Revelation 10 verse 1. A great millstone, the great city Babylon, is where musicians come to play, and craftsmen come to make it rich. If Babylon itself, which is near the sea, is ever re-inhabited, could it ever match what other major cities have become? It is still uninhabited due to the recent wars there. Matthew 18 verse 6, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That great city Babylon, Satan has his great city, Babylon, because God has his, Jerusalem. Revelation 18 verse 23, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. This city has influenced all the nations with her religious sorceries, which deceived them into believing a lie and condemned them to an eternity in hell. Revelation 18 verse 24, And in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. In her was found the blood of prophets, and of the saints, 
In this chapter, we have discovered the identity of mystery. Babylon the Great the Mother of Harlots, it is false religion. Chapter 19, The Marriage Supper. Revelation 19 verse 1, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation, and glory, and honor, and power, unto the Lord our God. After these things, the destruction of Babylon in chapter 18, I great voice of much people in heaven. These are those who are saved in the tribulation period. Alleluia. This is the only chapter in the whole Bible where the Hebrew word hallelujah is used. It is used four times. It means, praise the Lord. It is the Hebrew word that means praise Yah, short for Yahweh H, or the name of God, but it is not translated as such from the Greek, but it is rather transliterated. It is said four times in a chapter that describes the awfulness of the battle of Armageddon. This tells us that God, and his saints in heaven have the proper perspective about what is really going to transpire on that day. Whereas we may see the horrendous loss of life, the saints in heaven see God avenging the deaths of millions of martyrs and ending the works of the devil for the next thousand years. Revelation 19 verse 2, For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. For true and righteous are his judgments, what judgments? The slaughter of his enemies. The great whore. Revelation 17 verse 15. His servants, the Jewish believer in Jesus. Millions of true believers have been martyred and will be for their faith at the hands of this whore who is a religious whore deceiving the nations that pledged allegiance to her. Revelation 19 verse 3. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. This is the smoke of the great whore mentioned in Revelation 18 verse 9. Revelation 19 verse 4, And the four and twenty elders, and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. The four and twenty elders, Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11, 16, and 19 colon 4. The four beasts, the seraphim, Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3, Revelation 19 verse 5, And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. Praise our God, this is English for Alleluia. All ye his servants, these are Jewish believers. And ye that fear him, these are Gentile believers that bless Israel. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Revelation 19 verse 6. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The voice of a great multitude, Daniel 10 verse 6, his body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms, and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Luke 19 verse 37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. The voice of many waters, Psalm 29 verse 3 The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thundereth, the Lord is upon many waters. Jeremiah 10 verse 13 When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He mocketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Jeremiah 51 verse 16, When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He mocketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Ezekiel 1 verse 24, And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. Revelation 14 verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Revelation 19 verse 6, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, as the voice of mighty thunderings, Revelation 4 verse 5, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Revelation 8 verse 5, And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth, and there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. Revelation 11 verse 19, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, 
and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. Revelation 19 verse 7 Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Alleluia! Praise the Lord is proclaimed for the fifth time, once in English. Omnipotent, all-powerful. The marriage of the Lamb is come, the Lamb is Jesus, and his wife is believing Israel. His wife hath made herself ready. Jesus' wife made herself ready by enduring unto the end and obeying the commandments of the Lord. Luke 1 verse 17 And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Revelation 19 verse 8 And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Fine linen, clean and white. It is the reward given by God for Israel's obedience to the commandments of God. Daniel 12 verse 10 Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Revelation 3 verses 5 and 18 He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 19 verse 14 And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Revelation 19 verse 9 And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is between the Lamb and his wife, who is no longer his bride, because the wedding has already taken place. The Lamb's wife is believing Israel, as Revelation 21 verse 9 tells us that it is the inhabitants of the city New Jerusalem are Jewish. Revelation 19 verse 17 And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Asterisk the parable of the great supper in Luke 14 verse 16. Luke 14 verse 16, then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper, and bade many. Revelation 19 verse 10, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, we are to bow before Jesus alone. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, a believer, and a Jew, that have the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. Notice also how this person identifies himself. He said that he was a fellow servant and of thy brethren, and that he had the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, this is the ability of a believer to understand this book and rightly divide it instead of spiritualizing it. No lost religious person can do that because he refuses to open his eyes to God's word. It will soon be too late. The Second Advent Revelation 19 verse 11 And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. I saw heaven opened. Here we see heaven opened for the second time in the book of the Revelation. Genesis 7 verse 11, In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Psalm 78 verse 23, Though he had commanded the clouds from above, and opened the doors of heaven, Acts 10 verse 11, And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. The first time was to let John see in, in chapter 4. Many wrongly teach in verse 1 of chapter 4 that that is a picture of the church being raptured. The church has to be raptured before Revelation 1 verse 1. The churches in chapters 2 and 3 are not churches in the dispensation of grace, they are tribulation churches. Their doctrine is identical to what Jesus taught in the Gospels, and especially Matthew chapters 24 and 25, when Jesus was telling Israel about enduring unto the end of the tribulation period to enter into their kingdom. This is not doctrine for us today in the body of Christ. Our doctrine is found in Romans through Philemon, written to us by Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. A white horse, 
This time heaven is opened for Christ to come down to the battle of Armageddon. Jesus Christ is described here as the rider on a white horse. Faithful and true, both are titles describing Jesus, and both are capitalized, denoting deity. In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. He standeth to plead before judgment, and he standeth to judge when the time of pleading is done. Revelation 11 verse 7, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. Revelation 12 verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 13 verses 4 and 7, And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. Revelation 19 verses 11 and 19, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. Revelation 19 verses 12 to 13, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Revelation 1 verse 14, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Revelation 2 verse 18, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Exodus 3 verse 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and, behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Acts 7 verse 30, And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Hebrews 1 verse 7, And of the angels he saith, who mocketh his angel's spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. This is the Greek word diadem, which is different from the Stephanos crown of Revelation 6. Just imagine the look in the eyes of God's enemies on that day as they see Jesus returning to earth not as a lamb that had been slaughtered, but as a conquering king with a fierce countenance. A name written, the word of God. He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. This is found in Isaiah's prophecy. Isaiah 63 verses 1 to 6, Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel? traveling in the greatness of his strength? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trod in the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold, therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Revelation 19 verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, not one army, but armies. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, one army is made up of those who were purified and made their robes white by suffering during the tribulation period. They are the ones who endured unto the end and resisted taking the mark of the beast. Daniel 12 verse 10, Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Revelation 3 verses 5 and 18, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 19 verse 8 And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The other army is the angelic host of the Lord, it is not the church coming back to live on the earth. Our dwelling place is in heavenly places. Revelation 19 verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, 
and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. A sharp sword, Jesus Christ himself will fight with the word of his mouth, and the battle will be over in seconds, and shall rule them with a rod of iron. The reason for ruling with a rod of iron in the kingdom is that all will not willingly obey him at that time, and when they don't the rod will be used on those rebellious nations. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Isaiah 63 verse 3 says that Christ did this alone. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb, where Israel's enemies are destroyed in front of them, and the fowls of the air eat their flesh, and Israel's kingdom is established. Revelation 19 verse 16, And he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ will be King of kings, and Lord of lords forever, so they are not just titles, they are actually part of his name. Revelation 19 verses 17 to 18, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. An angel standing in the sun, this may be the fourth angel from Revelation 8 verse 12 and 16 colon 8. The fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, these fowl are prophesied in Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39 verses 1 to 4 Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up, from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou, and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Ezekiel 39 verses 17 to 20, And, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God, Speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, Assemble yourselves, and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh, and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus, ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. Matthew 24 verses 26 to 28 Wherefore if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth, behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. The supper of the great God, in a moment, his foes will be crushed under his feet, and he will be stained in their blood. Revelation 19 verse 19 And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. The beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, the kings of the earth's armies, him that sat on the horse, and against his army. Jesus returns with his army of martyred saints, but Jesus does all the fighting with the sword of his mouth. These are not the saints of all ages, but those that had been killed during the tribulation period. His army is the armies in heaven mentioned above. The angelic host also returns with Christ. Revelation 19 verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The beast, the antichrist was cast alive into a lake of fire. The false prophet, the false prophet was cast alive into a lake of fire. The mark of the beast, they were deceived by the beast and the false prophet. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. On this day over 200 million souls will perish and go to a Christless eternity in a lake of fire because they choose to believe a lie. Hell has to enlarge itself to receive them. Isaiah 5 verse 14 Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth, shall descend into it. Revelation 19 verse 21 And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, 
they were slain by the word of God, which is a sword. Although their flesh was consumed, their souls will never be consumed, they will be tormented in the lake of fire forever. All the fowls were filled with their flesh. Goliath told David that he would feed David's flesh to the fowls of the air, but God turned it around and the fowls feasted on Goliath instead, as it will be in this day. Psalm 79 verse 2 The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth.